Okay. So I'll call this meeting to order for Tuesday, September the 17th. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Resolve that the agenda for the September 17th, 2019 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the September 3rd regular council meeting and the September 11th special council strategic planning meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Gray? I was just wondering, are we making the September 11th minutes public? I thought they were. Okay, I'm just asking. I, I, it's just a little unusual in the middle of the planning to, to publish those until we have a plan, but yeah, I don't no, care. There's nothing in it. It's really oh, okay. so, meeting and closing yeah. meeting. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, okay, never mind. I, I thought you were talking about having a discussion or something. I'm going, yeah, I didn't really do it. Okay, final all, say. All in favor? Yeah. It's carried. <laughs> 7.1 Resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion or questions to Mr. Poole? Councillor Delore and Councillor Gray. I see you had a uh, you have a comment here about the well supply project. How is that going? Is that almost wrapped up? Are we on budget? Is it what's, what's that looking like? We haven't had too much of an update on that. Uh, yeah, the the mechanical work is all installed. Hydro is, is looking at doing the, the switch over to the new MCCs next Tuesday morning. So the electrician is getting ready for that. And we've got our backup plans all in place for that switch over. Uh, the remaining work after after the, the new MCCs are hooked up is basically a connection from well number one to the to the uh, new control building and to where we go. And then, of course, the connections to the roof around the water supply to the train <clears throat> So, some excavation work after Hydro gets, gets the MCCs around. But it'll, it'll be done this year, though, right? Yeah. It's gone well. It's, it's gone well, yeah. There's okay. no, we have the, the change order number one approved this spring. Uh, we're looking at a change order actually probably coming up. Uh, the next meeting that will be explained. <coughs> Councillor Gray and Councillor White. Um, the repairs on 6th Avenue North, um, and maybe I missed it, but it, it, because it, you may have raised it before, I don't remember seeing it, but I, I, it never clicked for me because um, I've had any number of people ask me about that. Can you explain that? The sidewalk repairs on 6th North were. were I guess given priority due to the federal election coming in, they they've, they want access to their building, so we've we basically instead of instead of replacing those bricks or re you know reinstalling those bricks, which is very tedious, we made the decision to go with concrete. So we have we have some serious drainage issues on each corner of the east side of the veterans hall. So the, that's the yes. extent of the project. So to the street side, the frontage. Right. That's what so we've, we've we've rebuilt those uh, drainage extensions, I guess, underneath the sidewalk into the gutter. So and then, of course, during construction, our, our curb stock blew, and that's our latest leak in the utility. So that's why the the concrete did not finish because we have to go down, fix that curb stock, replace it, and uh, then we'll finish pouring. But so that we, we always intended to repair Sixth Avenue North. This wasn't something that was done specially. We, act, we expedited for the election, but it wasn't done specially for the election order. No, this election was a plan for the vet hall. Okay. Yeah. Um, the second question is um, how are we doing with coordination with Swan Valley West on the landfill and particularly the hazardous waste stuff? Uh, I believe the hazardous waste, all the, all the work that's left to do is. Uh, basically a, a granular cleanup, so all the material's gone. Uh, we have, we're scheduling a sit down with their contractor to work out, I guess, the particulars of how it's gonna be operated. For, it looks like it's gonna be two days a week, but I will contact the reading of Swan Valley West to be in that meeting as we discussed. 
it's taken a while, but uh, yeah, it's cleaned up and up and down. When do we expect to have that resolved? Uh, I'm hoping within weeks. Okay. Councilor White. Two questions. Uh, you said the engineering companies have requested tours of the pool facility. What's that about? Uh, just engineering companies have noticed that we put out the RF RFP and then pulled it. So two companies uh, just requested tours. They were in the area <clears throat> and they wanted to take a look at the building. We obliged. Okay. The other one is uh, I see that the Slug Valley West is uh, discussing <laughs> the possibility of sending rural water out to their uh, participants, which constituents would certainly involve the town of Slug River. And somewhere in our file, we have an MOU that a previous council had agreed on, uh, trying to be proactive, but perhaps it would be prudent for us to dig that MOU out and share it with the council of today and see if we still agree with uh, the concept. As I recall, the bottom line is we, we would send them water the same price that our constituent pay for, no more, no less. Uh, the, the details of the agreement I can't remember, but I will definitely pull it out. That's why we have to pull it out. Yeah. It, would have, it would have been signed in 2010 if you're yeah. looking for a for date. Comes with the YA. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm glad to hear the uh, hazardous waste has been cleaned up, but I've heard. Did, how what, how was that done? Was it through Miller? And I heard that there was there was you know a, a five figure number going to be involved with cleaning that up. Is it, or was it all through Miller Environmental? Or is there going to be a cost to the town outside of anything we had budgeted? Yeah, yeah, we rewrote it money in the environmental health budget to to pay for that. Okay, so, so what, there was a budgeted, not doing there was a budgeted amount for that, and we we are staying within it. But okay. I mean. Just as a precaution, we stopped some contracting work in order to until it's finished. Okay. To make sure that we can. Okay. Councilor Gray and the Council Royal. Um, just as a matter of or, or policy, why would we sell water at the same at our price? I'm, I'm, right? I mean, unless there was an overarching agreement for um, shared services, then. Yes, self evidently we would, but um, if we've now had three different things where we've had significant challenges, mostly from, formed in, the, in Swan Valley West, where that hasn't been the policy, I'm not sure why we would necessarily say, yes, okay, you're going to take our good work and we're going to give you the benefit of it. Why wouldn't we sell them at a profit if, if that's the case? I'm missing, unless I'm missing something. And I certainly. I think I think that to answer maybe that I think I, I do agree with that, but maybe we would just dig out that uh, agreement first, and then and have a look and see if there's an expiry on that or what the details are, because maybe that's something that we have to review again. Because what necessarily was done by council back then may not be necessarily the views of this council. Right. So, uh, Council Morio is next, unless you were uh, anything else, was, and then just, White and yeah. Delorier. Uh, backing up, uh, Mr. Cool to Miller Environmental. Uh, you were mentioning that, uh, or reported before, that their cost had gone up exponentially from what they had quoted you either last year or the year before, and that you were going to investigate as to what that issue was as to why the cost was increasing. Did that ever get resolved as to why their rate for, for that cleanup is significantly higher than what they had quoted before? Uh, it, was, it was the amount of material that should not be there in the first place. So it was the that was the the biggest factor in the overage compared to <coughs> previous years' estimated cost is the amount of material that we should not have accepted that they still have to deal with. So the what we did was give them our budgeted amount and they they got it done for for uh, what we wanted it for. So we knew that we would go as a an ongoing basis through the project to see how much was there, how much it we dealt with, how it packed, how, it, how much would be shipped. There was a lot of unknowns going into it, but uh, it worked out in our favor that we didn't have to keep any material on site and do it next year. Okay. Council White. Well, I was going to 
I, I agree with you completely. That's why I said we should get a hold of that MOU and discuss it after we looked at it. Um, <clears throat> were we able to determine where the offending uh, hazardous waste was coming from, like the stuff that wasn't supposed to be there? Uh, we don't know who, but we know what. So we, we have know specific, specific industries that may. Have <coughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want me to say. No, that. I don't say it now. But I'm, uh, I guess uh, if we could send them a letter. And yeah, the, our intentions are to send a letter, have pictures of it, and then moving forward, the the contractor who's going to be working out there has pictures of the material uh, to make sure that we don't accept it. Right. If we know the industry, do we know the source in the sense of which municipality is responsible? Uh, we know one out of possible. <coughs> okay, I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure whether to raise this last thing, Your Worship, uh, under this, but I just want to leave it in this rather than my report. Um, I've had a couple of people who complained about uh, potholes on 4th and 3rd South. I'm sure you've heard them too. Um, in fact, one person who ran after my car and stopped me to tell me. And, and so I think what we think is it's not appropriate and not important, but um, can we look at, at that? And I, I don't know exactly what needs to be done. And, and yes, so that would be great. Councillor Fraser. I had the same issue. The back lane behind the McKay building. Oh, yes. So if you happen to call Mrs. Alfred about the blue boxes, she's probably going to mention in the back lane. Yeah, I've, I've actually met with their neighbors. And it's on the list. Thanks. Yeah. All right, any further questions? Okay, all in favor? Carried. <laughs> Result that the August 2019 anti report be received, moved by Councillor Freeze it, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. Moving on, 7.3 Council reports. Uh, we will start tonight with Councillor Freeze. Oh. Um, the strategic planning meeting last week was um, very good, I thought. I actually have one of those to go to tomorrow for new music care. I have minutes from their last meeting. If anybody uh, would like to know what's going on with them, they're busy planning Spooktoberfest and the Christmas toys for you, dry. Um, they're just a real busy group. And, um, I've already talked to Derek about some trees at the nursery that need to be cut down, so we'll be worked into the budget. I want you all to think about something to do for Manitoba 150. Um, blue boxes in the back lane, Derek's going to check into that. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Moyo. Um, on September 11th, we had our first strategic planning session, which was uh, went very well. Um, we're going to have a consensus, hopefully, when the project is done, as to a strategic vision and way of moving forward for the community. Um, also, congratulations to Councillor Fleason and the communities in Bloom for achieving um, five blooms and bronze, whatever you want to call it. I'll pass it along to you. Um, for that, so that's the same as what we got last year. So didn't, didn't go backwards, didn't gain, but uh, I guess it's um, outside the <coughs> community uh, that due to our uh, community, do want to like the PC and what programs we have. So again, congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Okay. How's Sir Deloria? Uh, had a library board meeting yesterday afternoon. Um, in Benito. Uh, the one thing of note, the board, we had a committee set up to look at a, the wage scale within the library. It was kind of all over the place as far as 
what people were paid for doing the same job based on based on what minimum wage was at the time they got hired. It was a very convoluted system, so we've, we've come up with a, a, sta a staged system where, where that shows a, a line of progression that, that an employee can have. Um, so we had a fairly lengthy discussion on that. Uh, it was passed by the board, so that'll be uh, uh, incorporated into next year's budget. Um, then last night we had a district rec meeting and we were once again dealing with the never-ending sort of existential crisis that district rec always has um over what their purpose is what their mandate is what 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 are, what are we to do um we had two fellas from the province one may have been a contractor i'm not sure but uh, two fellas from the province that are we've uh i guess uh bring on board to help us outline where we're going. Um, and we had some open conversation about uh, where District Rec was going in, in terms of not, not just where, where what it had done in the past, but maybe even that that's the mechanism that we wrote future shared services agreements through that type of thing. But before, any, before we get into the meat and potatoes of those discussions, um, we're gonna be bringing it up at the G5 on what, uh, are the other municipalities interested in, in some sort of shared vision for recreation or, or are they not? And uh, and basically, uh, uh, either you're on board or you're not. And we, we have a lot of brick and mortar as well as a lot of programming that we do. So we're, we're committed to it. Um, I don't, I've never heard anybody advocate that we should be closing anything down here. Um, so I guess it's either who's with us or who's not. Um, before we, before we look at and it, it kind of is works out that it's good timing all our shared service agreements do expire this year so it, it, the stars are kind of aligning in that regards and i'm sure councilor gray will fill you in on anything that i may have missed um and then the strategic planning meeting on the 11th i like the direction we're going hopefully we can we can drill down deep enough that, that we have a plan that will actually provide real boots on the ground direction to, to our staff. So so I'm happy with where, where that's going. Uh, also, the library is having a fundraiser barbecue on uh, Friday. So, Friday, yeah. You know, we can question myself there, Council yeah. Freeze. No, but it is Friday, so I encourage you all to uh, stop there for lunch. That is it for me. Okay, Councillor Light. I just compliment the communities and boot people again for the job. I think we'll go after gold. I, some people say you should go after silver. I like gold. <laughs> uh, the strategic plan uh, obviously is quite positive. And what I like most about it is a method to evaluate its success for lack of, and a timeline to evaluate the success for lack of. Having all the plans in the world with no timeline, no evaluation, uh, creates problems. A paid commercial, but the money goes back to the Swan River Valley in our community. The Swan Valley Outdoors people are having their dinner on October 19th. $50,000 we've spent in our community in that last year. And that's it. Okay. Uh, Council Bowie was something. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. If we could add to the uh, next committee meeting, uh, we need to discuss our, shared, or our special service bylaws that they expire this year. And specific, uh, the, the general one as well as the one dealing with garbage and recycling. I know uh, Mr. Poole had mentioned that in September he'd be bringing us a report regarding garbage and recycling. I'm not sure if that's still in his. In this, his... It'll be this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if, for the next committee meeting, I think we need to have a discussion on, on those, those bylaws that need to be uh, looked at. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Gray. Um, well, we've had a, a number of successful things over the last few weeks in the group, right? So congratulations to all of those people. Um, before you even get to say it, I want to commend um, all of our staff. The reports are uh, better than they've been since I started, and I think you can see it report is more complete than anything I saw or anything that I saw was being tabled um, in the previous council. So, that is fantastically helpful and encouraging. Um, in terms of the arena, 
Tom Barry Recreation. In terms of the arena, um, I've had a number of people, including particularly the assembly the board, talk about whether or not we can arrange for access on the east side of the arena. I guess it's the east side or the far side, anyway, um, of the arena um, for to make it easier to get back in there. I, I don't know if that's possible, and, and I certainly don't. I said I would raise it because it would raise with me, but I don't do that. Again, it's like uh, moving from Barnes to Gold in the communities of Blue. It's an important piece, but it's not something that I'm viewing as a high priority, but it's something we should look at, certainly. Um, I also want to commend the fact that the arena has had spectacular reviews for how we've done the renovation and so on from everybody I've talked to. Um, Bantam, the Parkland Bantams came up here and were incredibly impressed. In fact, they're thinking of having their they're pitching uh, provincials and they're thinking of doing it in Swan River um, because they were so impressed with what had happened. So that's um, a pretty positive thing. We have it on the agenda, but there is a RISE meeting uh, the day after tomorrow. Um, everyone should attend. Um, settlement services, I attended a, a barbecue. We're supposed to have a meeting, uh, but we didn't. And, and quite candidly, it seems to run without much of meetings. Um, but I, I think we might, as a council at some point, want to look at it, not just settlement services, but it's out. in fact, how we address um, newcomers in the community because um, it, is a, it, it used to be that Swan River was very static. And, and if you came from here, you were good. And if, if you did, you know, you, you, by the time you're grandkids, you now, you now live here with her. But we have a much more dynamic population now, and I think we need to look at how that impacts the community and what we should be doing, if anything, differently um, as a community. Uh, never mind the settlement services piece, which I think is important piece, but it may be other things that we should be doing. Um, this is something um, for, for, if you can sort out between the town and the foundation. We need to have a meeting, uh, not with me as a council, but with me as, as council and with the executor. If we um, don't do it very soon, we may have to have um, Mr. Johnson, who's the executor, on phone or, or video or something anyway. Um, but it's a fairly important piece of the meeting because I'd like to brief everyone on what's happening. And the town is one of four residual beneficiaries, and you should have an idea of what's happening sooner rather than later. Um, because there's some decisions being made that will impact you know, the estate. Um, and I, again, I commend the um, strategic planning session. I know there were lots of jokes about nobody likes attending strategic planning sessions. I, I said, you know, I've had nothing but pretty good results from this, but, and, and but I, I love Henry Ford's comment and kind of failing to plan is planning to fail. And I, I think that's absolutely true and, and and i'm having spent a year here whining and bitching and complaining about not having a plan i'm ecstatic that we're moving in that direction i have to say uh, i just want to come back to councillor delory's uh, comments with respect to the um, swan valley uh, recreation district um he summed up what our decisions were pretty well this arose because we started as a, as a commission saying that what we wanted to do was a, a recreation audit to say, well, what facilities do we have? How are we going to use them? Do we have too many facilities? Self-evidently, we counted the other night, we found seven or eight arenas for a population of 14,000 people. I think it's safe to say we have too many arenas, whether as a community, as a large community. And so there are lots of things that we should be doing. But um, the two people who are uh, our, our, our team, uh, Van Luke and, and Chris Gould, who came up um, quite early on, identified, <coughs> as I think all of us have, that really the Recreation Commission right now is dysfunctional. It, it, it has no purpose and it's drifting. And, and we have disparate contributions, disparate interest in it. And so um, there is a process, and so there's going to be people coming to this council table, and 
you know, I, I, I stood on a, a bit of a limb. I don't think it's a huge limb, but uh, just as Council Laurier said and said, I've never heard uh, one of There were people who suggested every council has people who are naysayers. And I said, well, I've never heard a single person in our council. You know, and I, you know, I'm not, not adverse to saying, I think things have gone badly, as most of you know. But I think our council has been incredibly supportive of recreation generally and, and we're broadening view of recreation. And that uh, I just think we're ready to do that. But everybody, uh, what we need is all, and so the process is just so it will more clear. Everybody's going to be asked, every council is going to be asked. And, and one of the things we've talked about is whether or not we should include all of the, all of the communities that are somewhat outside, which includes Mountain. Whiskey Seabick, uh, uh, Pine Creek, about whether we should talk about in this 14,000, 15,000 person trading area what recreation looks like and whether you want to participate in sort of an ongoing overall piece or you want to be out of it. And, and really, the, the test is do you want to talk about those things? And then we would develop a list of all of the things our council would say, these are the things we want to talk about, which includes works in order. And maybe I don't want to say, well, we're not prepared to talk about works in order. We'll try and work out something that we have as a memorandum of understanding that says this is the process. This, these are the things that we're looking at in, in recreation. This is the thing we're looking at, and here's how the funding would work. And decide all that in advance before we go down the process. And then we can do the recreation audit and so on, which is a much more mature and sensible way to approach things. Decide on the rules, then play the game. Seems you know, a relatively prudent process. Um, and so that's what we're hoping to do. Um, but I have to tell you that, um, from my perspective, and Councilor Larry will correct me from, from his perspective, but I think it's the same. Um, and I believe Council, Councilor Tony has the same view as well. That at this point, all I really just want out of the other municipalities and other partners, which includes the school division, is an answer. Are we in? Are we out? Are we going to fund recreation collaboratively, or are we going to each go on our own? And going on our own would be more expensive for the town, just as it would be more expensive for everybody else. It's just self-evident that it's going to be. But we can't be every year going back, going, well, what if, okay, what are you prepared to put in this year and negotiating this? I cannot do the model. It, it, it is stressful for staff. It is stressful for residents. And it's unnecessarily stressful for council members. I mean, look, we don't need to go through that. I mean, it'd be hard to scratch to go through that negotiation, but don't, don't get me wrong. But it's not coming to a point here, actually, which is that we've sort of arbitrarily set for participation and for inclusion of some kind of draft memorandum, November 30th, that if, if we're not in a position to actually move forward on November 30th, then um, Ms. Toy and I are likely to come back with a recommendation, let's just go along and, and you know, whatever. The, the others will do whatever they're going to do. And if they want to come to the table later tonight, like, they want to come to the table later tonight, like, we'll, we'll look at that. That's fine. We're not precluding discussion. But we can't be perpetually held ransom. And so I, I, I think that's a fair extension of what you said, Tom, the way. So I wanted everyone to know that. So it's, it's going to move fairly quickly. It's either going to move or it's not going to move. But it's going to, the reason I mention it, and the reason we set the November 30th deadline is because we've committed ourselves as a council to having a, a much earlier budgeting process. And so we need to know what we're budgeting. Are we budgeting for a valley-wide recreation piece? Or are we budgeting for town of Swanford? Which would impact things like how people pay for services. Whether they, you know, um, if, if our service, if our facilities are being used for something, um, they're going to have to be charged at full market, and we will do some form of subsidy for people who reside in the town. So that was those are the things, and, and you got my thing on looking at a date for the foundation, whatever. I'll leave that in terms of uh, Yeah, and then we'll stop right here. It's all good. Okay, that's everything. Sorry, I was too long. No, that's good. That's you, know, you covered off some really good points there. And for you want one more thing? Go ahead. I just want to invite anybody that's interested in the museum 
to come to the museum at 1.30 on Saturday. They are always working for new members. Um, it's not a big organization, but they do a great job. So everybody is uh, encouraged to come out. Costs you 10 bucks to become a member and then you work. Can I, I, I'm not here, but can I just give you my $10? I've been a member for two or three years now. And I'll just give you Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess for myself, I don't know over too much overlap because there's a lot of things that were discussed, but first of all, the people of Communities and Blooms and the people that have done the work, and, and which has been outstanding, and it's all been a community effort. Yes. And I congratulate, congratulate you and, and those people as well. But uh, it's, it's a big part of our community pride, and, uh, and they need to be commended to, to uh, continue on with that because it does make our community look good. Yes. No matter where we are, um, I guess the tre strategic planning session that we had last week again that was all known from everybody else. It was very valuable. It was forward, moving ahead, and uh, I don't think that um, we're, we'll see some good coming out of it for sure. I, I have to be confident that that will happen. Um, as far as the, just hearing a little bit about the. Um, uh, district recreation. I know that I sat on that board for a number of years, and, and uh, you're right. It's just it's kind of stagnant. We just don't know where it's going to go, and, and we, we lost some roles <coughs> of people on that committee over the years because they didn't feel like they had a purpose at all. And so I think that moving forward, and we put out the question, even if it's at the G5 or whatever, if it's a blood question, which it needs to be, then we'll know where we're heading for. So uh, I'm looking forward to see how that uh, that goes. So. Without uh, any, and, and actually, also just to add, I have been in communications with some of our First Nations leader leaders as well as trying to plan another meeting moving forward here this fall, and some of the other stuff that we were talking about back in the spring with them, and as well as um, uh, you know, one of the Métis leaders as well to have some discussion there because there's been some stuff that was kind of left on the back burner. Sepatoya and West Creek. Yeah. Pine Creek. Good. All three. They're very good. Yes. Yeah. Good. So uh, that's it for me for now. So I will move on. The result of the CEO's report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Any questions or comments, uh, Mr. Kroll, with your report? Uh, no, not really. Uh, uh, just, just the one thing is. Uh, if we're getting together for the G5, would it be too soon to start to invite our uh, uh, our First Nations groups to maybe something like that? Uh, even if there's not a great deal of input on their part at this point, it would be uh, at least a good socializing mechanism for between the councils and the uh, and the First Nations uh, leaders and stuff. So it's just an idea. And Councilor Gray had a comment. Well, I, I couldn't agree more that all of the First Nation members and the NACC community, the, the um, MMF, could all be invited. Unfortunately, we're not the host. Right. So I think we need to write Swan Valley West and ask if they would, if, if either A, they would invite them, or B, they would mind if we invite them. <laughs> either one, right? We don't care. Yeah, yeah. I've sent a couple of emails I've talked to. Uh, sure. Mountain CAO of Mountain. Oh, okay. Page. Page. Yeah. Oh. Talked to her a few times. I haven't made a response. So I'm not going to ask at this point. So. Yeah. Well, like I said, they're the hosts. So yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Second thing is uh, uh, you asked me to contact uh, Livingston Council. So I said that they finally responded to the second email. So uh, he responded last night saying they were having a council meeting tonight. So I think they're or hopefully get something together to possibly attend uh, one of our meetings to to be able to discuss why our service okay. for it. Yeah. That's good. Councilor Morey, do you have a question? Um, just more of a comment here was reading there, you mentioned it last week, but I see it's in so I'll see you report uh, regarding the stats. And it's very impressive and commendable to the office staff that uh, um, for the last month that there's 1,200 issues or people that came through the office and less than 5% uh, left um, that are unresolved at this point. So Actually, it's less than half a percent. Yeah, yeah. so um, 
Kudos. Very impressive for the amount of volume that goes to the office here and with the percentage of that. They may not leave away happy, but at least the issue has a conclusion to it. So And the vast majority do actually leave satisfied that they, you know, I think they're getting their money's worth and things like that. Right. So. But it's a very impressive stat. So I also know Councilor Gloria. I, I guess uh, another thing to add to our committee meeting then, if we're going to be meeting with the committee, we should uh, maybe do a, a 40,000 foot run over some of the philosophies behind what we want to see in, in future uh, fire service agreements. I, I have a couple of thoughts on, on that. So that's good. Idea. Section 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Mount Over Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Mount Over Assessment Services on September the 3rd and 10th, 2019 be made to the 2019 property and business, business tax rules with the resulting increases totaling $20,130.13 and reductions totaling $9,130.20. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Let's carry. <coughs> <coughs> Result that the council members wishing to attend the RISE meeting in Minnetona on September the 19th be granted permission and to have expenses covered by the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor White, and by Councillor Dory. Do we need to have a list or is that just kind of like we don't have to put each of the no. names in there? No. This is a lot of this is new to me. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why we've done this in the past, but I guess that's something we can talk about. But Okay. Fair All in favor? Let's carry. <clears throat> Ten point one. Be resolved that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number twenty four nine forty four to number twenty four nine seventy five for a total of one million five hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred fifty four and forty eight cents. Payroll account checks number forty five seventeen to forty five twenty four. For a total of $132,060.10, moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Question? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the financial statements for the seven months ending July 31st, 2019, be adopted as received, moved by Councillor uh, DeLorea, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Let's carry. What was that, what was that again? Oh, sorry. The uh, July. Oh, yeah. Resolve that the Council of Indemnities bylaw be read a first time, moved by second sorry, time. Second, second time, sorry, a second time. A second time, moved by Councillor uh, Deloria, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? I guess, I guess just a question on how, how it will be implemented. Um, will, the for, will the pay for the for the entire year be this amount or the first up until it's given third read? Like I guess basically we'll skip December is is how it will work out. I'll ask Terry to You'll comment ask. on that. Okay. Uh, this this is partially my fault. This this I uh, did the first reading just before I came, and I didn't know there was any bylaws in the process at that point, and I dropped it. So Terry came to me and said, "Hey, you want to finish this?" So I share responsibility on that. Yeah, thank you. All right. Any further discussion? I, I presume. Councillor Gray? I, I, I thought that 
we had reduced the amount we were being paid already. So in court you can do that, didn't we? The, this this is the second right. reading of I know they're just saying we didn't need to reduce it already, didn't they? No. Didn't they just, well, mm -hmm. we need a yes from the day it's passed. Yeah. So the, re the reduction will only be from the day it's passed then? Right. I would assume. I'll, I'll ask Terry to comment, but it would make sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Um, Go ahead. I, there's just one other thing I forgot to mention. Um, maybe we can add for the committee the whole, at some point, um, discussion on the lateral drilling of the, um, the what was it, the, the, the uh, heat? Uh, at the arena. arena. Horizontal drilling. Horizontal drilling, lateral drilling for, uh, really, not the resource but what was the other thing for? Geothermal. 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 Because we were because we have to thaw that out. So so at some point we need to talk about getting on that because that was part of the overall plan. It wasn't just that we were going to leave it where we were. We were also going to do that, push the frost out, to push the frost out. And so we, we just need to make sure we don't lose sight of that because that's that's really important that we do it right. It's the lead cause of the problem there. Well, that's right. Get rid of the problem, and then our fix will be. So we can, add, we can add that to our next. Uh, yeah, or I just I account. forgot about it. I intended to do it, and then I, I didn't write it down. So I apologize. No, nope. that's that's fine. Thank you. Okay, uh, resolve that pursuit the sections one fifty two three of the municipal act. Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Memorial. We have the unresolved legal matter. All in favor. It's carried. Thank you. Okay, so I have resolved that the CAO and Public Works Superintendent carry out directions given in camera. I didn't say the second one. Okay, well, that one. I'll move that one. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. You have one more? Yeah. Well, the RFPs. Okay. I, I typed it out and uh, didn't save it and went to another page. So. If that's the worst thing that happens tonight, we've got a pretty good night. So does anybody want to carpool to Minotaurus on Thursday? Okay. At 12 miles. Well, 12 <laughs> miles is 12 miles. Oh, oh man. Stick the town with the vehicle. Well, no, no. Well, Why, you, you, wouldn't car you wouldn't drive together? I'm, I'm He's coming from a or you through to Minnetonia. You know, well, it depends what I get done. If I, I would carpool for sure, except that. But you want to head to Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so, going okay, so you'll be out. But maybe Councillor White or. I don't know. If Mr. Crowley, are you planning on coming on Thursday or not? No, I have to leave at noon on Thursday. Okay. I have a meeting in Brandon okay. uh, for Friday morning. Okay, so is there. I don't know if that's a concern of there. Okay. Do you think we'll go to one of our silly rice meetings? I think it's a silly meeting. It might get kind of silly. You never know with that many silly people in the room, it might get silly. <coughs> well, it won't be long, I can tell you that. So it's not worth my, atten my, my attendance. My attendance will be long because if, if it goes much off the rails, I'm just going to say, well, other councils can take it. You know, it because I'm already going to be at 1 30 in the morning. And then at the green, I have to be tearing up some plenary sections. It's a revolution. Did you buy raffle tickets for the library fundraiser? It's probably not appropriate to have a council. Oh, we're excited. waiting for a resolution. I think we can multitask. <laughs> I, can, I can wait and just sell tickets at the same time. Trying to get along, boys. For good cause, community cause. Yeah. So, you know what I got. Oh, man. What are the tickets? 50 50 so for the Northwest Regional Library. Um, I think it specifically says what purpose the money will go to on the ticket. Children's reading program. Oh, children's reading program. Can't I just give you money? What if you win the money? I don't know. Do you, I don't agree with you. Well, who's to give them the money? Oh, you just give them the money. 
because I actually agree with George's reading. <laughs> All this rice. <laughs> you want to think a teacher would no, ask that question? <laughs> 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 That's pretty stunning. Okay, it's there. If you want to try it? I can target up by one. Result of the administration producing carry out the needed RFPs to, uh, to the repair, the recreation. Sorry, RFPs to the repair, the recreation center. I think there's an extra line there, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll move there back. Is. Uh, moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Yeah, there's two twos in there. Like, yeah, yeah, I saw that it is right. when you were reading it. Result that the regular meeting council will be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? We are adjourned.